Hey, hey, good morning. I've been kind of slowing down the past few days because of the heat. And uh, kind of caught myself getting a little too hot and uh, not feeling real good from it. So kind of had to slow down a little bit and uh, drink a lot of water. So look out out there. It's easy to get uh, dehydrated and uh, uh, maybe even kill yourself <laughs> if it gets too hot. It gets awful hot in this little building here. Um, I'm going to uh, either move or expand, so I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But the little air conditioner I got here uh, gave out last year. And I, I've got this unit I picked up. They do all this remodeling of buildings around here. So I got this uh, uh, motel unit that's also a heater, <laughs> heater air conditioner. I can find a place to stick that. Uh, maybe by the American uh, Rotary Phase Converter Doghouse. Put it out in the doghouse, yeah. Well, of course, um, dealing with uh, high precision machines like this, uh, uh, more jig bore, and right next to it here is uh, a standard machine. Uh, a uh, brown and sharp uh, horizontal milling machine with a vertical attachment on it. Uh, but uh, the uh, accuracy that you can get out of this machine, you, you know, naturally you'd want to get the best out of this machine. So it, you can kind of take some of the techniques from uh, this machine here, this jig bore, and apply over to the um, regular standard machines the best you can, you know. So you take some of the uh, things like uh, being able to change tool ge geometry, which uh, this is for here. Look at this junk I got piled up. The, the tool and cutter grinder uh, is sort of, ha I think, hasn't been used much since the 1980s uh, with the flood of insert tooling and the availability of insert tooling, which is economical for factories and uh, big companies and stuff. Yeah, but not a necessarily uh, as little guys. So that's one of the reasons why I have a, a tool and cutter grinder, for multiple reasons. But, uh, you know, if you have a horizontal milling machine, uh, how do you not have a tool and cutter grinder to sharpen the cutters? I, I don't understand that one. But anyway, you know, I guess if you don't use it much, or you, go, uh, you can uh, use a, uh, a grinding service, that's what what some people do. But, you know, old horizontal mills and tool and cutter grinders are kind of uh, on the outs, you know, when you uh, have all this disposable tooling. But it's too expensive for the home shop guy. And uh, <laughs> I can give some really great examples of that. So, and we can get over to the lathe here. Now, this lathe here uh, like the jig bore, this toolmaker's lathe here, Mark 10 double E, um, is uh, designed with the parameters of the highest precision. And those parameters were actually uh, secret, sort of, amongst uh, the elite uh, toolmakers, I suppose, and other people and, and all that. But it was actually uh, printed in the Kenna Metal Romicron Boring Head Manual. It's a boring head system, finely adjustable, but with expensive inserts. But it, uh, it describes uh, the parameters that you need uh, to successfully do plus or minus one ten thousandths of an inch, let's say, making a chip with carbide, okay? So you can take uh, the parameters in that uh, Kenna Metal uh, 
manual. Now you're going to have to search that up yourself because it was online. I haven't lately been able to find it. I did have the manual. I had the set of heads. <laughs> I got the set up pretty cheap and I used most of the inserts and I found the price of replacements. I go, hey, this is, I, I don't need this. Um, I can do everything I need to do with the more uh, standard head and my tool and cutter grinder. <laughs> Because I'm not cutting bearing um, pockets to that accuracy every day. So, you know, I can use uh, standard uh, machines. Yes. <laughs> Get what? I didn't have enough work, though, for the inserts with the kind of little uh, Robert Crown Boyan head system. But anyway, those parameters, um, and I'm going to lay them out to you. And uh, the, the Monarch 10 double E meets them. And one of them is uh, in that was a, a spindle speed of a uh, minimum of 3000 RPM. And uh, the 10 double E does that. Now, and also the uh, feed, now that's important, less than one thousandths. The 10 double E here has half thousands. Okay. Now, you can actually trace that little thing back to the secret days with the more jig bore. Because uh, the, early, the number two more jig bore, I believe the finest feed, we'll get over here and look. The finest feed was one and a half thousandths. So the number two jig bore did not meet that parameter. And I had the heads, I was using it on the machine, and it was not doing it because of that feed. And if you look up here, it'll say 0 .008, 8 ten thousandths. I reworked the drive up here to reduce the feed. I was able to make the, uh, the can of metal system work on here. And this, this jig bore <clears throat> uh, is a custom machine. It's a single speed with higher horsepower that was delivered out there at Hanford. And it has uh, about a 2850 uh, spindle speed on it. And I asked more about it a long time ago, long time ago and they says, well, it was adjusted like that. Don't mess with it. <laughs> okay. So this slipped into that parameter when I reduced the feet. Now, the number three more jig bore that they came out with reduced, uh, uh, has it so uh, it has less than one thousandth on its finest feet. Okay, so that fits in, um, fits into that parameter for the plus or minus one ten thousandth. Well, you know, you take a machine like this and you're not going to get that because just, it's just not designed to do it. But what you can do is the best you can and take some of this over to the standard machines. And this is one here I'm dealing with right here at this axle set. So what I'm trying to do is take everything I've learned off this and come back over and apply it to this this classic here just to get the best I can out of it you know simple as that and I'd like to take you along on that little trip and tell you uh, what some other people have done you know and what I'm gonna do and what I can do Okay, now, obviously, excuse me, <coughs> still got smoky air here. Obviously, this doesn't have 3,000 RPM uh, minimum spindle speed. It has 1,127. And this is one of the uh, biggest problems here. And um, a guy that has a plastic mold shop has um, an 18-inch grizzly lathe. And you wouldn't believe what he can do with that thing. But that was a problem for him, too. The finest feed on this is almost 3,000.0027. 
I mean, that's way more than half a thousand, <laughs> okay? So what the plastic mold guy did on that grizzly, and someone, you know, mentioned uh, doing electronic feed, and uh, a fellow sent me a, um, a photo um, of a Monarch 10 double that they put electronic feed on, too. Um, that was, uh, was an option. There's been a couple of those uh, showing up. Well, what the plastic mold guy did is on this end here, he rigged up, uh, I think it was uh, a tooth belt and uh, a servo power feed off of, um, off of Bridgeport. Just put a pulley on there and hook that power feed on there. And then he's got electronic <laughs> uh, variable, uh, variable uh, feed. And uh, he was able to uh, tighten up the tolerances he needed there uh, considerably. His other machine he had there before he went full CNC. I mean, he, got, he, uh, he was making plastic molds before, you know, CNC was real com common. He, plastic mold guys uh, <laughs> do a lot of stuff. But uh, he got a uh, hard inch. Um, a feeler, a copy of a hard inch, and that worked out really fun for uh, for stuff. But uh, so that's what he did to get that feed down, you know. Then uh, adjust your tool in accordingly. Now, the, one of the one of the advantages that the plastic mold guy has, and I don't want to rub it in, is he had a tool and cutter grinder, and. Uh, Man, you know, if I don't think that uh, I could do it nearly as much as I do without that machine. I just, it's really critical. But I don't want to discourage people that don't have one because uh, if you practice and take the time, you can hand grind tools, but it just takes a lot more time and uh, it's hard to be consistent. So anyway, I, that's central to getting to mo the most out of all the machines here is uh, the cutter grinder. It, it only makes sense to have uh, sharp tools to begin with. Okay, so now, now I said that, now there's this. What am I going to do uh, to try to get the better accuracy out of this with those coarse power feeds. Well, from years of practice and having bench plates without power feed, I got good at hand feeding. So, you know, some people are good at one thing, some people aren't. The plastic mold guy is not good at hand feeding. He had to have power feed. So I'll just hand feed it. I can do it smooth enough and good enough. Okay, now I have to adjust the tool angles, depth of cut, and experiment on uh, holding tolerances on this thing. And uh, I'm not getting very much tool def uh, deflection because of the monster tip kit variants. But uh, I've been really spending a lot of time working on the adjustments on this thing, and it's taken uh, it's taken a bit of time on that. And it's sort of like, uh, this lathe's pretty heavy, and the adjustments, uh, you make them, and it's sort of like the results show up after using it quite a bit. And uh, that's another problem with these machines, too, is uh, they really uh, don't work very good if they sit idle. And I noticed that with the jig bore, and uh, particularly this axleson. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I, I, I showed that belt set, because that happens right off. And so if you want to use the jig bore, and uh, they're, they're the ones that told me about that, because I bought a new set of belts, and they're expensive. I go, man, they're lumpy. You know, they sit for a day to day. Go, oh, yeah, yeah, you got to turn that spindle. He goes, you, you want to turn that spindle anyway, because there's so much preload on the bearings, the, the balls can bring out them to the races. So I got in the habit of rotating the spindles on my machines, including the saw blades on the, on the table saw. <laughs> but, 
you got to have smooth running equipment to get close tolerances. Okay, you got to do every single little thing, and I'll just keep going through them. Okay, and uh, I'll I'll take you along. Uh, I'm trying to hit target uh, diameters on this axle, so now I'm having a bit of trouble. Uh, it just takes a while. I uh, had to make a new screw for the cross side uh, gear uh, adjustment, and just things like that. Clean, clean more stuff out and adjust stuff. And it, the, it's taken quite some time for this lathe to sit level with all the feet on the ground. So <laughs> it, 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 that's because uh, of, of past storage or whatever, it being strapped to a skid, I don't know. But it's straightening itself out and showing good tolerances uh, on the parts. <laughs> okay, hey, I'm gonna load this and hope you have a good day. And uh, I'm going to uh, uh, make some cuts and uh, try some different things and see if I can hit, uh, see how close I can hit a number. And I'll turn the camera on for that, on this old axle set. Okay.